Hello, thanks for joining me. I'm in North Pembrokeshire and I'm going to visit the isolated church of St Andrew at Bayville. When I was a child I used to dream of going back in time and now I'm about to do just that. Do you want to see what a church was like in the Georgian period? Well come with me and let's find out. Ready to step back to the 1830s? Here goes. Just look at this. The font is from the late 12th century, as plain as a pike staff and only knee high. It can't have been very easy baptising infants in this. The pews are box pews and have simple seating on two sides. This looks odd to us now to have seats facing in several directions, but the idea is not that they face the altar as we see in most churches. They're oriented towards the triple decker pulpit, complete with sounding board. There's also an original coffin beer. Here we have the East End. It's not really a chancel as such. There are plain communion rails and a communion table. It wouldn't have been called an altar in the Georgian era. The only ornate thing in the whole church is this monument to Thomas Lloyd Esquire of Cumgloin. He was the last of the Lloyd family who lived at this modest gentry house. He died in 1788 having never married. The house was left to his successor Maurice Williams who died in 1840. The monument has the arms, I presume of the Lloyds, and the Latin motto Scuto Amoris Divini by the shield of God's love. Thomas Lloyd was a patron of Welsh literature and a good farmer. Poems were written about him. After Maurice Williams, his successor, had died, the house passed through several hands and was rented out. Eventually it became a farmhouse, so there was no gentry family here which explains why no one modernised this church. It's fortunate for us because it leaves us a rare survivor of the type of church that would have been common here before the great wave of restorations, rebuilding and reordering of churches that took place in the mid to late 19th century. So now I'm going to show you around this Georgian church in more detail and explain why it looks so different to the Victorian churches that swept this kind of place away. The focus of the church is, as I mentioned earlier, the pulpit. This is a preaching box. The emphasis here is not on the sacrament of Holy Communion, which was probably only a rare service held perhaps a few times a year. It's on the sermon and the Bible reading. In fact, the easternmost pews are arranged to seat the occupants with their faces to the pulpit and their backs to the communion table, something which would have filled the Victorians of the Ecclesiological Society, who were the great influence behind the rebuilding of churches, with absolute horror. The pulpit is accessed from these steps and gives a good view of everyone in the congregation, no escaping the preacher's eye here. The sounding board would ensure not a single syllable went unheard. Below the pulpit is the reading desk from which the Bible was read and the lowest part was for the parish clerk who led the responses of the congregation. 
The windows are sliding sashes with plain glazing. Apart from the slightly gothic top, they look perfectly domestic. No stained or opaque cathedral glass here to keep the eye focused on ceremony or sacrament. There was nothing much of either of those. The pulpit and pew paint scheme is, incredibly, the original one. There is nothing to distract the eye from the word of God. The overall effect, though, is one of calm and simplicity. In fact, the only bit of modernisation is the pitch pine screen put up at the back to act as a vestry. This looks to me as though it was put up sometime in the mid-19th century. This church is now redundant. It was in a poor condition but has been carefully and sensitively restored by the late Roger Clive Powell, a conservation architect, and it's now cared for by the Friends of Friendless Churches and open to visitors daily. You might easily, at first, mistake this place for a non-conformist chapel and not a church at all. And while my own personal taste in architecture runs very much towards the High Victorian Gothic style, I must say that here there is a sense of peace, tranquility and reflection, which I found very appealing. Its beauty is in its simplicity. If you want to visit and experience the atmosphere here, may I suggest you park at the top of the lane by the signpost rather than outside the church. The lane is narrow and turning round is not easy. I hope you enjoyed looking round Bavel Church with me. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and check out my other videos. And as always, thank you for watching.